Please get ready for a dictation of exercise number 21 from Progressive Magazine of January 2022. Five seconds. Start. Pandit Ji's thoughts had a pronounced scientific outlook. He promoted the scientific temper while working and unceasingly for industrial revolution. This is part of our history. We have only to look around us and see the giant projects which he conceived, planned and implemented to bring prosperity not only to his generation but for generations to come. He described these great enterprises as modern temples. These are indeed the most fitting memorials to this great son of India. Large irrigation and power projects have made the deserts bloom and ensured uninterrupted water supply for the expansion and diversification of agriculture and industry large and small. The basic heavy engineering and machine making industries provide the sinews to our industrial and agricultural growth which is further augmented by the increasing use of indigenously manufactured fertilizers and pesticides. One has to view the great panorama of the Green Revolution and the socio-economic development programs ushered in by the National Extension Service and Community Development Concepts. This will convey an idea of Panditji, all comprehending mind, his faith in his people and his compassion and concern for the welfare of future generations. As one stands and contemplates these enormous modern temples, one cannot but be lost in admiration for this far-seeing architect of our nationhood. Panditji's secularism was related to Gandhiji's realization of the universality of all religions. He made his own discoveries during his extensive travels within and outside the country. His keen appreciation of our variegated culture and the ancient heritage of this great country led him to believe that while no one can or should live in the past, we should understand and respect the composite character of our culture and the basic unity which pervades the several aspects of the many diversities in our composite culture. To deny this is to deny our nationhood. Panditji preached communal and racial harmony and respect for all religions. This is the basis of our democracy and socio-economic development and our survival as a nation. Panditji's contribution to the democratic process in this country shines like a beacon. He was a democrat and believed that democracy is the only way of life and progress. His speeches in the Constituent Assembly on freedom and objectives of freedom, especially on social and economic matters, resounded throughout the free world, bringing hope and cheer to many. A sharp legal mind helped him in giving us a constitution. Panditji was a parliamentarian par excellence and had great respect for parliament and other democratic institutions, which he regarded as the instruments of the people's 
will and yet he has often been called both a dictator and a democrat in his lifetime or been blamed for being too dictatorial or too much of a democrat he had always and was always impatient when faced with inaction but he was no caesar and was always a true democrat at heart tolerance is a prerequisite to a parliamentary democracy and pandit ji who taught the temper of peace in international affairs maintained this quality in the working of our own democracy the first general election in 1952 when millions of indians exercised their franchise in a free and independent india is a splendid testimonial to pandit ji's leadership and the principles he preached of tolerance fair play and personal freedom his unfaltering vision guided us in three general elections and gave us the confidence that we could run our own affairs this spirit was carried by nehru to the villages to the people at large for he believed not only in democracy at the national level but in democratic decentralization pandit ji taught us how to think and act democratically with the sixth general election approaching we need to remind ourselves that we have a great example to follow and even greater example to set in a part of the world where the democratic process is currently under severe strain pandit ji was not a rigid socialist but a practical socialist who realized that socialism would not come about overnight but could be achieved only openly and through democratic processes he taught us that both democracy and socialism were irresistible in the context of our living conditions that one was not possible without the other that both had to go together and could go together planning and development according to the people's needs required hard work and even sacrifice of short term needs for the sake of the long term future the public sector for instance had to be built in pursuance of this objective and to balance the private sector and keep ulterior motives under control the state had necessarily to invest in many industries in which large scale private investment on such a scale was not forthcoming or even possible particularly in science and technology and atomic energy pandit ji repeatedly stressed the importance of large scale medium and small industries reaching down to the village and cottage level he perceived that these were complementary to each other and that the basic heavy industries were necessary for the growth and development of industries stop